So, what is the difference between civil engineering? <laughs> the video got closed. Hold on, hold on, I'm reopening it. Hello, everybody. Hey, guys. We're on. This is AFMF and Engineering. We're celebrating our one year anniversary and we decided to celebrate it by answering all of your weird questions. Yeah, we've been getting a lot of questions lately. Uh, either through our Facebook group or uh, email or just from comments and stuff like that. So uh, we thought it'd be fun to, uh, you know, just uh, make a video here. It's been a weird year. Yeah, we got like <laughs> crazy questions, got a few harassments. That's true. So, you know, we're going to, uh, we're just going to go through them one by one and uh, we're going to answer them. So we're just going to give you like 10 questions that are, uh, we thought were interesting and uh, were weird. So here we go. Cool. So, all right, let's do number one. What's the difference between civil engineering and other types of engineering? For example, if I pick mechanical or electrical, what would be the big difference? So you want to start by answering that? Sure, I'll, I'll give this one a go. So, okay. so civil engineering deals mostly, uh, I mean, civil engineering is a broad topic. So when you go into civil engineering, um, there's a multitude of different streams that you'll be able to enter. The most popular would be uh, probably structural engineering. That deals with uh, the design of anything or the analysis, structural analysis of any, any structures that require, you know, it sounds weird, but structural analysis. So uh, it could be buildings, bridges, um, any, anything that... Ships. Ships, uh, whatever. Structures, oh. roller coasters, it could be anything. There's other uh, streams in civil engineering. There's transportation, right? There is uh, geometrics, there is environmental. I guess the real difference when you really break it down is that mechanical engineering and electrical engineering are in the dynamic, in the moving, in everything that has movement connected to it. Yeah, so maybe like a, a motor that's spinning or, a, yeah, generally working with things in motion when you're, when you're talking about mechanical engineering. Civil engineering, there is some kind of dynamic structural analysis that goes on, but that's very, very advanced stuff and that's mostly done by computers. So if you're talking about like a building swaying or a building moving under earthquake conditions or something like that. In terms of electrical, I think electrical is very theoretical. Yeah. Um, you, yeah. Um, don't go, end, don't go into electrical unless you're <laughs> really good at math. I think that we want to get to equilibrium while most of the other branches use dynamics. And I guess that's a real difference cool. between us and them. Let's, let's look at this one, this next question here. Uh, what was the hardest course that you had to take during your degree? Okay, you start for it. All right, well, the, the, hardest, <laughs> the hardest course for me personally was, uh, was Calculus 1 because uh, I went back to school uh, a little later. And um, I, I thought it would be a good idea to uh, just go back to school randomly without practicing. And uh, Calc 1 really hit me hard. Uh, yeah. It was really tricky. It was, um, there's no bell curve or anything usually in the first courses that you take in, in university. And uh, you know, all the people that I was with just came out of high school doing calculus. So that was, uh, that was a tough one. What about you? I think, I think for me it would also be Calculus 1. But strength of materials was the hardest for me. Like That's going a tough through one. all the courses, that was a course that really separates between the people that are going to be the engineers and the people that are going to have to retake it and retake it and retake That's it. That's true. Calculus wasn't easy. Like a lot of people see our videos and tell us like, "Wow, was everything like easy for you guys and everything?" But the simple courses, the simple mathematics for us. It was the wall. It is. It's tough, you know. And, and and after you learn and you can you can help others, you know. And that's that's kind of how we how we do it. But um, I think the hardest course also can depend on the the professor. So the professor can uh, mark really really hard, and the course can be tough, or the professor can be a little more lenient with his marking or her marking, and and it can be easier. So that's also a factor. So, yeah, it yeah. actually connects to the next question, which is. Why did you start making these uh, videos of yours? That's a good. Question. So I think it's a question that we actually get all the time. Like, why did you decide to do the channel and everything? And I think that okay, both of us are not kids. We came to university after a few years, like walking, doing different traveling, and yeah, yeah, doing things. And then suddenly we reached like calculus one, <laughs> calculus two. Yeah. And, and it was so difficult, honestly. That's true. Like, so we kind of, uh, yeah, I think we understand like the difficulties that students have a little more because we went back to school and, and, and the difficulties for us were magnified compared to someone who just came from high school. So I think yeah. we're able to communicate that pretty well. Too. Yeah, so I think that's the major reason that we no, kind of right. got in into it. Yeah, no? I, like, I like that answer. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Okay, 
Uh, next question. Could I graduate engineering if I'm not really that good at math? Ah, uh, that's a good question. Too. You know, so maybe, I'm, maybe my, my math fundamentals aren't great, you know? Uh, I'm not naturally good at math, I hear that a lot. And the, the, the honest answer to that is that's not true. Um, like math, anyone can be good at math. Anyone could be, anyone could do calculus one, two, and three in school. That's fine, like it's not that hard. What is hard is forcing yourself to do the amount of practice required in order to do a good job. So like putting the hours in, doing the practice problems. Um, math, I think getting good at math is all about persistence and practice and it's not necessarily like a natural kind of uh, gift. I think that natural mathematical kind of, I guess, concept or whatever is, is overrated, you know? Like exactly. you, anyone can be good at math, you just need to practice. It. Yeah, exactly. I, I think that like most of the people that are really smart people that are really good in math and everything, it's such a small percentage of engineering. Most of the people in engineering are not the best in math. They were never like the top of their class. It's just people that are willing to do the hard work, you know? Yeah. And at the end of the day, the thing that is important for you to remember is that do what excites you. Do what you want to study. Do what you want to really want to do. Okay, we get a lot of people that we've met for our degree that only do the engineering degree because their parents told them that they have to be engineers. And then they, they are like okay with math, they don't really like it, they don't really like get the hang of it. And then they just drop out after the first or second year. That's so. true. That's true. So you really have to love, like not even love, but be willing to put the effort. That's true. That's the that's the word. And and after you put the effort in, you'll get the the payoff later, which yeah. is like a respectable degree and probably a good job. Yeah, so. and I think that both of us are not like crazy math students no. that in high school were like the best and everything. No, we just we just work hard. That's it's all. We're hard workers. Yeah. Yeah.